Hello, and welcome back. I'm Sam. And I'm Cindy. And together, we're the Memory Makers. Are you ready for another riveting episode tonight? I can't wait. More bushwhacker upgrades. All right, I'm ready. All right. I know what you're thinking. I'm laying down on the job again. But in order to do this, you're going to have to lay down, and you might as well be comfortable. So if you got a creeper, I highly suggest you grab it. <laughs> so what we've got here is the diamond plate comes down. And it stopped short of where it really should have. This is just a major design flaw from Braxton Creek on this. It should have continued on down and got underneath the front edge of the flooring. <clears throat> but if you feel there, you can hear the crinkle. And I apologize for the lack of light. Everything is black underneath here, so you, you just can't really see it very well. Let's see if I can shine a light. So there you can see the texture of the house wrap. Here are the crinkle. And right here where the sharp edge is at, that is the front edge of the flooring of your camper. So what we need to do is protect this because any stick or you know, even a sharp fingernail will go through this material. And that is literally the only thing standing between you and the outside underneath your camper. And the last thing you wanna do is let water get into this material right here because it will just start coming apart. So what I did last night was just played around with a few ideas and I came up with this quick and easy piece made out of aluminum coil stock. And I can show you where to get that at. But what I did was put just a simple Z bend in it. And what I was able to do was actually lip it underneath this. I'll say that down. It's tight, but I'm able to slip that in, especially here in the middle. Yeah. So I can slip it in and slide it over. So you can see what I've got here. So it's following the natural flow of overlap. So if any water hits this and comes down and gets to this, it can't go back underneath this because of the direction it is. And then we'll seal it once we get it in. But then it comes back and it lips onto this floor. So when we bend the whole piece to go across the front, it'll be a little bit of a fight. But we're going to slip this in underneath this diamond plate and cover this entire um, piece of house wrap. And then I'll paint this to match once I get it done. But I just wanted to use a different color so I could show you the, what you're actually working with here. <clears throat> now, there are three screws in each corner. There's one screw in the diamond plate itself that we're going to take out. This screw here sticks way out back here on the back and holds the house wrap out. And the same with this screw here on the side. So I'm going to take a second here and just go ahead and remove these six screws. And then I'll show you what we're going to use this little piece here for. Okay, so now we've got the three screws removed. And it loosens up this corner a little bit so that diamond plate pulls back a little freer. And what I'm using this piece for is just to see how far over I can go with my material. This house wrap actually wraps around the corner. And I had already sealed this corner because of exposed wood. So the sealer is kind of holding it down a little bit. But on the other side, I haven't done anything to it yet. And we'll go over and show you what you're probably looking at. Before, this screw that came in from this side over here actually stuck through and was pushing the house wrap out. So that's the reason I took that screw out and we're gonna shorten those screws up, just use shorter screws when we go back so it doesn't stick out. But I'm hoping, and I don't know for sure yet, but my hope is that I can get this as tight as I can on both sides and still be able to get it in. Now there are two wires that come down out of the floor, which are right here. Now these two wires come from the SAE port on the driver's side. So we'll have to notch our, our little deflector that we make to go around those two wires. And then we'll seal that back with some good sealer once we get done. But those are the only two obstacles that we have are these two wires and then these corners of this trim that come down. We're going to have to get this to kind of slip in underneath that, but I think it's going to be doable. Um, let's go over to the other side and I'll show you how to get this cleaned up so that you can get the most room as you can right there. Okay, now we're over on the passenger side of the camper and I've got the three screws removed here as well. And I've slid my piece over. And if you come around this way, Cindy, and show in there, you can see there's some exposed foam that they've used to try to seal stuff up. And if you get in a little closer, you can actually see some wood that I didn't get sealed up because of the angle I just couldn't see. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is just take a simple putty knife and get rid of this foam. It cuts pretty easy because we wanna try to get our new piece to go over as far as we can so we just don't, so we get as much protection as we can. So now, Sorry about that. You can see how far over I was able to slide this. And on my little test piece that I made here, I got this a little short 
So on the new piece, we're going to cut this a little longer to get a little bit more coverage back here, uh, down here at the bottom. But I think this is going to be a pretty simple fix for a pretty serious problem. So let me get a tape measure. I'll get a measurement here, and then we'll go over and uh, use the aluminum brake and bend the full length piece of this. And then we get to see if I can actually get this to weasel in here. So we're over at the, the aluminum brake now, and I know what the first thought that most people are going to have right now is, I don't have one of those. So I, I understand that, and there are ways to work around that, but because of the lack of light here, I'm going to go ahead and, and use this, and I'll address that at the end. But on the brake, what it allows us to do is just make simple, crisp bends in aluminum trim coil. And what I've done is I've measured 59 and 5 eighths is what width I'm going to go with, and I've got my angle duplicator here that I use to measure the angle of what I want that first bend to be, which also matches the little test piece that I made last night. And I just bent that by hand to, to get something to work with. But let me mark this real quick and so it breaks it in slide. I've just got a four inch strip of aluminum trim coil cut. And that should be the length of what I need to make the two bends and get the straight area to cover that material with. I'm just going to square cut this end. And just use a simple pair of sheet metal shears. Scrap piece there. Slide that back in the brick just to hold it for a second. And now I'm going to mark five-eighths of an inch on this edge, and which will give me my first bend, and that will be the piece that actually lips up underneath the diamond plate. So what I'm going to do is mark that on this end here, which I believe I already got marked. I do. Make sure I got the mark here. Cut that mark off, so we'll remark that end. Is this riveting yet, hon? Riveting. <laughs> Away. <laughs> Don't leave yet. You're running the camera. Okay, I'm going to pinch this down a little bit, get it set on my marks. Clamp it down. And it's almost 90 degrees, but not quite. So I'm going to raise this up and then check to see where we're at. So I can use my angle duplicator to see if I'm pretty close. And boy, I nailed that one. So we're going to go with that. And then on this other side, we're going to flip it over and we're going to bend from the white side up so that we get the reverse bend on the bottom piece. And this will be the, the lip that goes underneath the flooring and helps seal this off. So I'm going to go with about a 7 8 inch run there. So we had 5 eighths on one end and 7 eighths on the other. And then the remainder of that four inch piece will be the straight section that covers the, the loose area of the building wrap. Now, if you don't have one of these aluminum brakes, um, and most people don't have them laying around because they're kind of expensive, but rental yards or places that rent tools, um, a lot of those you can call around and see if they have them. And for a long time, I didn't have one. And I would come up with different ways to do what I needed to break for, for jobs. And one thing I would do is I would go to a rental yard and I'd buy the guy lunch. I'd go back in the back room and make a few simple bins I needed and, and just take my material in and leave. And that worked for a long time. Um, it just got to the point where I really kind of needed one. So I'm going to bring this up until this piece here is kind of level with the world. So I'll just keep touching that up until it's level. And that should get us pretty close down there on the end. So now you can see we've got the 5 8 inch uh, lip here that's going to go underneath the diamond plate. We've got our straight section and then our 7 8 inch piece that's going to go up underneath the flooring. And once we get this all in, we'll put some screws in and screws in the bottom and seal it all up to make sure it's all good and tight. But this will give us the protection we need to prevent from uh, tearing up that house wrap because the flooring, I've been doing quite a bit of work on our bushwhacker and I've made some pretty good sized holes in the back for our new heater. The flooring is a full one inch thick piece of particle board. Um, it's not quite OSB, it's more of a particle board type material. And it gives a lot of strength. And they did put a water membrane on the bottom of it, which is really nice. 
the bad thing is that on the edges, anywhere there's a raw edge and water gets to that, it will just start to decay, um, you know, in the first couple times that it gets wet. So the more you can do to prevent water intrusion into your camper, the longer the life you're going to get out of it. So let's take this over to the camper and see if I can sneak this up in there and, and try to get it underneath that lip. Once we get under the lip, I think we're home free. What I was afraid might happen did happen. I, I didn't rehearse this, so this is on the fly. Um, I've got this all the way over to the driver's side edge. And because of the two Z bends, it takes a thin piece of metal and makes it very rigid. So now what I've got is I cannot bend this piece without distorting it. And once it's bent, it's bent. So I can't physically get this to lip underneath this. It's over there as far as it can. So what I'm gonna have to do is just simply trim this off right here, and then we'll split the difference on each side so that we get the most protection as we can. And then we'll seal the corners off with um, a good quality sealer. So the, the main thing is to get as much protection on this house wrap as what we can get. So we'll just have to slide this over from that side over to here. And we'll be behind this on both sides. We just won't be all the way to the edge but that, that will be so much better than what it is now. So let me go ahead and get this marked. I'll get it trimmed and then we'll try this again. So I made the cut now and shortened it up and I'm probably at about 59 inches, but I would say each one of these is probably gonna be a little different. So I wouldn't go with my measurements. I would wanna measure each one individually, but I've shortened it up now to where we're right at the edge of this trim here. And I'm able to get this to go in here now. So you can see it's fully up in there. So we've managed to get to that point and now what I'm gonna do is get on the creeper, get underneath and start working this, this lip here in underneath the diamond plate. It's not gonna be easy. And I went off and left my pull tools at the house. So I'm gonna have to uh, probably use my fingernails to get in there and do it. But uh, I think we can get that in there. There's quite a bit of flex in the diamond plate, especially in the center. So if we can start in the center and kind of work our way out to the edges, I think that will probably get us. So let me slide underneath here and I'm gonna put my headlight on to shine some light up there. So hopefully Cindy can get a pretty good view of the struggle that I have getting this in here. All right, here we are underneath the camper. It's not near as comfortable as laying in the camper. We can both guarantee that fact. And one thing I see that I forgot to do at the top side was I really probably should have measured where those wires are at. But this will give me an accurate location here. So what I'm gonna do is just mark here on both sides of these wires and pull this back out and just notch this area right here so that these wires have free room to go in. And then like I said, we'll seal that with a, a good quality sealer once we get the piece back in. But we're in, you can see it's laying up here right at the, the edge of the diamond plate. So I really think that we're gonna be able to get this in there pretty quick and then just slide this right up to the underside of our flooring, get it screwed in place, seal it, paint it, and we're on the road. All right, I got the notch made here for a wire. So we got clearance there now, and there's plenty of room there for the wires to move. So what I'm going to do now, I've got slid over, kind of splitting the difference on the sides, is I'm going to take my hand and pull this out as far as I can without physically bending the diamond plate. I'm going to reach over my camera lady and see if I can get this to go in. And what I may have to do is take it out one more time and trim an angle here so I don't have quite so much going underneath because this corner is just locked in position. I can't really do a whole lot with this diamond plate in the corner because this aluminum trim comes down and just locks it tight. So I'm gonna pull it out just one more time and trim an angle on both sides here to thin that out so that I can, because I don't think I can get any more play out of it by doing this because I'm up tight against there's a piece of wood in there has got me tight. So let me pull this out and trim that one more time in the corners. So we got room to slide this under the diamond plate. Okay, we're back under here now and I've trimmed both corners. And what I did was I took it from, from the edge, I've moved back about a quarter inch, and went about four inches out to the zero point. So I've just got a long skinny cut right here, which shortened this up about a quarter of an inch. So now I'm hopeful that we can pull this out enough to, like I said, a set of pool, pool tools, those are hard to say, um, would probably make this a little bit easier. So we're about to get it. And just take your time and just work your way across. OK, 
because it'll catch everywhere that you don't want to catch. And then, so now we're into there. I'm over here on this side now. We're having camera difficulties here. <laughs> so, really close there. Oh yeah, got in there. That wasn't near as bad as what I thought it was going to be. So let's work our bait back across, make sure we're still in. I see a lot of hairy hands. <laughs> so this is more just a general idea video. Let's go with that. So you can see there's quite a bit of flex in the, the diamond plate here. And there's a piece of wood right behind this. So what I'm going to do when I'm done with this is I'm going to put an additional screw right here in the center to help pull this in. But we've got good coverage down here on our floor now. Um, we've got clearance on our wires. We got the corners covered. We were able to tuck that in underneath there. And now you can see we're solid. There's no flexible plastic. There's no house wrap that's exposed. So got the corners here and we're going to seal those corners up really well um, once we seal this all together because we don't want to create another problem by allowing water to get behind our protective piece here. So we're going to seal this edge once we get everything screwed back in place. We'll seal this edge right here. We'll seal the edges of the corners on both sides and then seal around the wires. Because the last thing you want to do is create a one problem while you're fixing another one. So we're going to seal it up really well. Um, I will probably do that after I paint. Um, and I apologize I won't get that done tonight because this is going to get dark on us too quick. But you get the general idea here. It's just a simple Z-bend out of a four-inch wide strip of aluminum coil sock. You just measure your angle with an angle duplicator. Uh, 90 degrees probably would get it. I think it was running around 83 degrees on the angle. <clears throat> so really close. And then it's just a matter of trial and error to get it to fit. You're just going to have to fit it to your individual camper. But it, it's critically important that you do this because over time that will fail. And then you've got water coming into your camper. When we first got our camper home, the corners had exposed wood in them and I covered those right away. And also if I can get Cindy to move over to the side and show down the side of the camper, another area that you want to give a lot, a good look to is this joint right here between the outside wall of the camper and the floor of the camper. You do not want an open joint down that side. And the reason is road spray going down the road in a rain will shoot right up in that gap and get the wood behind the phylon material, the fiberglass on the outside, there's a wood backing. And you get that wet a couple of times and it starts to deteriorate. And the first sign of it is bubbling or blistering of your phylon. When it reaches that point, it's game over. The wall shot, you're, you're looking at a total rebuild. And also on the bushwhackers, why I've got everyone underneath here, um, one other thing to look at is the edge of the door on the bottom where the overlaying of the bottom of the door covers the wall. On ours, that is not sealed. And you can push that in with your hand a good quarter of an inch. So if yours is like that, I highly encourage you to run a bead of sealer and seal the bottom of your door and make sure the sides are sealed as well because there are a lot of people reporting leaks. You know, their bedding gets wet inside their camper because water is shooting up either in this joint here between the wall and the frame or underneath their door. It can come in other areas as well, but you want to look at these areas and make sure everything is sealed up really well because water is the enemy when it comes to campers. The drier you keep it, the longer you're going to be able to keep it and keep it nice. So let's come back over here. I'm going to, I picked up some black screws today. You can buy pre-painted screws that are already black. So what I'm going to do is um, grab those, put a couple of screws in here to help hold this in place. We're going to put some screws in the bottom here to lock this onto the flooring. And then we'll, um, like I said, I'll go ahead and paint it um, either tonight or tomorrow. And then we'll come back and, and put the sealer on and show you what the finished product looks like. But this is just a, a real quick general overview of a, a real simple way to fix a very big problem with your bushwhacker camper. And you only use the word extrusion one time. I did not. Yes, you did. Did I say extrusion? Once. Okay, we're back under the camper, and I've installed the additional screws to help pull this diamond plate tight to the camper and help lock in this upper lip. Uh, between the screws and this pulling in here and the sealer that we put on here once we get it painted, 
that piece will be locked in there and will not go anywhere. I also added uh, screws here along the bottom. Um, I put one in the middle and then one out of each edge and then one in the middle of that the best that I could. And that locked that piece to the bottom. So we're nice and solid now. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, the screws that I used were pre-painted black screws, half inch long. And I replaced out here on the edge, they had black screws that were an inch long and self-drilling. And they were sticking through, creating a bulge in the house wrap right here and we're getting ready to penetrate it. So I removed that, used the half inch screws. That's all it was needed to hold that on. Put the one inch back in here and, and used these four screws for my screws on the diamond plate because I think there's an aluminum uh, frame member right here that was, uh, that I got into. So it pulled that down really tight. So I think we're good now. We're gonna get it painted tomorrow um, as soon as we get time with the light, uh, get it sealed up. We'll show you what the finished product looks like. And and really it, it took what, 40 minutes to do this and that was included with the filming. So um, I'll, we're gonna go back out to the break and I'll give you a, a, a quick tip on how you can bend this without having the expensive break if you don't have one available. Hello everyone and welcome back to day two of our little project here to cover the house wrap on the front of the bushwhacker. I was able to get the painting done on the, the piece that we made to cover the house wrap and there you can see it blends in nicely. I'll show you here in a minute what uh, paint I used to match that. But um, all the way across looks good. You know, no more house wrap. Um, I did not seal it and to be honest the reason I didn't was because I didn't want to open the tube of sealer just for this when I've got other things I need to seal on the camper. So I will seal this um, at a few days here when I get a chance to seal everything else. Uh, but you just want to go, you know, down this seam anywhere that you've got a tie point, you know, here and here down both the whole front of the camper. And then this side you want to really, I would just pack that in with sealer. Um, just seal it up really well. It's an exposed house wrap right there. So if you go and put that full of sealer um, you shouldn't have any issues there with leakage um, and it'll protect that house wrap as well so but overall very pleased with how that turned out um, you can't see it you know from underneath cindy came over this afternoon after i had it painted and she's like wow you can't even see it so um, it solved the problem um, i hope that this helps everyone out and that we can get these fixed and we don't see a bunch of bushwhackers uh, rotting down in the front here in the years to come cindy thought it would be a good idea if i showed everyone um, how I proposed to work around not having the aluminum brake to bend this piece of Z channel or, or Z covering for your front of your bushwhacker. So I got just a couple of scrap pieces of one by four here and I got a scrap piece of aluminum and I'm going to show you how I do this when I, I'm away from my bender and I need to, to make a quick bend on something. So what I've done is just made a, a simple line down my material here parallel to the edge and that's going to be my bend line right here. This is my line that I actually wanted. So this, this is five eighths of an inch. So this is the same as the bend that is at the top of that covering that I made. And this extra inch right here is what I'm going to use to screw down through and secure these boards together. Because the trick is you need a really good clamp in order to hold this to get a good crisp bend. And then when we're done, we'll take the screws out and I'll just show you how to trim this off real easy. And you'll be left with a nice bend. So it's pretty easy to do. What we're gonna do is just take this and put it between the two boards and smash them together like this and then real carefully line up the pencil mark with the very edge of the board because that's where the bend will be is right there so we got pretty good right there I'll take a drill and a couple screws and i've marked on here where the setback needs to be so that i put the screw through the part that gets cut off so i've got a line there already so i'm going to stick a couple screws in here and that will really clamp it down and hold it so it doesn't move. And the only difference between this and bending the, uh, the piece for the front of the camper is you're just going to have longer boards. Okay, so we got it locked down tight now. So what we're going to do is just take this, and I like to put it on the edge of something sharp, and just slowly roll that like this. So you can see you got a nice crisp bend right there. The wood is not going to mar up your metal. You're going to paint it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But you can get all the way to a 90 degree bend. And I believe that was like 80, 82, 83 degrees, if I remember right. So there's your bend. 
then just undo it. It's probably very loud in the microphone. So you're left with this. So this is your bend where you wanted it at. This would be the top part of your Z. And this is just the extra. So what we're gonna do, an easy way to trim this, instead of using shears, shears will deform the metal as you go along. You just take a, a sharp utility knife and score down your line that you marked. And you just freehand this, try to say it right on that line. And you can run over it a couple of times to, to get, a, get a nice score in there. And then you can literally just take your hands, bend it back and forth, you're done. So there's your Z that you need for the top. And then just repeat that on the bottom. So you'll want to cut it a little long, obviously, so that you've got your material to screw to. But in the end, you can wind up with this using two boards doing the same thing that I did with my aluminum brake. So that's the quick, easy way of doing it if you don't have access to a brake. And the paint that I used to match the black frame was just Rust-Oleum Satin Canyon Black. And it goes on that frame and just disappears. It, it's such a good match. So, you know, it's five or six bucks at Lowe's or Home Depot, uh, if you can find it. Uh, I was having a hard time there for a while getting it because of the whole supply issue, but I think it's gotten better, at least in our area now. So um, I think that pretty well takes care of it. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I think that's going to be a good fix for a, for a problem that was going to be a, a problem at some point down the road. So uh, hopefully this helps everyone out. We can get these fixed and continue on. So thank you very much for watching.